now. All right, well, welcome everyone to our um, webinar between um, the Monument Blurs of North America and Cold Spring. Um, today, we're going to talk about um, how to make a memorable customer experience, whether that's in person or now um, that's being done a lot virtually with a lot of the changes that we've seen. Um, so I am excited to introduce our two um, presenters today, um, pa Paula and Ana Laura with Cold Spring. Um, so Paula is in her sixth year at Cold Spring and she serves as regional, regional sales manager in the states of Alabama, Mississippi, Northern Georgia, and Western Tennessee. Um, she has a family background in the death care industry and has helped families through the grieving process and encourages ways for permanent memorialization. Her 25 years of industry experience, including sales leadership, recruiting, training, allows her to bring a strong sense of business acumen and industry-related experience to her sales process. Um, Paula provides a professional consultative sales approach, driving world-class value-added solutions, supporting all avenues of permanent memorialization, including bronze and granite memorials, private estates, community mausoleums, columbaria, and cemetery construction-related sales. Um, Hanna Laura recently joined the Cold Springs team as a regional sales manager, serving the states of North Carolina, Virginia, and Eastern Tennessee. She is a graduate of Indiana State University with a degree in sales and marketing. She also has a family background in the funeral industry and her own years in professional ministry. Hannah Laura has helped families through the grieving process and encourages ways for per per permanent memorialization. Throughout her sales career, she has earned several prestigious sales awards, demonstrating her effectiveness as a manager, leader, and trainer. Her dedication to the need of permanent memorialization is based upon her belief that every person dies twice, once when they pass away and the second time being the last time someone whispers their name. With that in mind, Hannah Laura brings a sense of business acumen and death care industry related experience to her sales process including business development, sales leadership, and sales training. She also drives world-class value-added solutions by providing all avenues of permanent memorialization. All right, I am gonna go over some um, brief notes about how to use Zoom for anybody who might be new to it. Um, there is a chat feature, so if you have any questions or concerns, you can type a message there. Um, Paula and Ana Laura will have some um, interactive questions, so you are feel free to welcome to put those there. Um, you can also use the raise hand option um, to respond to some of their questions. Um, without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and give it over to Paula and Ana Laura to um, get started with our webinar today. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, thank you so much. I'm just getting my screen share ready. So give me just a second and uh, I'll have all this in place for us and, and we can take off running. Okay. So get a couple of other things. Oops, let me hold on a sec, guys. You know, technology, <laughs> right? <laughs> Technology. And escape. Hey, there we go. Oh my gosh. Hang on just a sec. Let's just get back to the beginning. Okay, that's it, guys. We're done. We're done. <laughs> Give me just a second. Let me get this fixed. Well, you saw that the slide briefly. So if I'm going to start out, I'm going to ask you guys, what does the customer experience mean to you? And as soon as Hanna Laura gets that slide up, you can visually see it while you're thinking about it. Because we certainly want a little interaction and want to know what you think that experience means to you, because it might be different for everybody. Absolutely. Okay, now I'm back with you. Yay for technology. Yay. All right, you go right ahead, Paula. Let's take off and get running. All right. So can anybody give me an example of what a good customer experience, what that truly is? What does it mean to you? Don't be afraid to jump in or chat. You can write it in the chat box if you know how to do that. 
So Hannah Laura, let me ask you in case somebody's, oh, there we go, from Ryan. This is going above and beyond the customer's expectations to show the unknown. Ah, oh, that's an interesting. A memory that lives well on beyond ourselves. All great answers. Awesome. Oh, we got more. Beautiful. All right. And bear with us because we're getting used to this technology as it's changing rapidly, right? Yeah. So Paula, so, what what when we when uh, and you did something really super fun, you kind of consulted uh Professor Google, what does customer experience mean? So customer experience to me is going to be they have that wow factor that anytime something comes to mind that they want in your wheelhouse that they remember you, your top of mind. Absolutely. So our next question on this slide is what, when does the customer experience begin? And Paula, if we get any answers, can you read those out loud for us, please? I can. So, so when does the customer experience begin? When do you think that that really starts to happen for the folks doing business with you? So it says the moment a customer calls you. Absolutely. Mm, good one. Good one. The first phone call. Mm -hmm. Lots of first calls. The second they walk through the door. Absolutely. Yep. yep. Onboarding process. Oh, that's a good I, one. The moment I send out the obit letter. Okay. Uh, oh, that's so good. So and when that's they visit your we, website, awesome answers, guys. Oh my gosh. So um, yeah, people are really good at this. Um, I love it. So the yeah. customer experience actually begins um, when they first are aware of your business. So let's think about that. So it could be they Google search you. It could be they're reading online reviews. It could be your website. Um, let's think a little bit about top of, you know, that top of mind awareness and and customer experience bringing that in as far as what kind of experience did someone else have with you and are they making a positive or a negative referral about you because here's something really interesting everybody sometimes the customer experience begins and you're not aware of it like they're having a conversation with someone or here's a big one um, that we learned when we were all in athens together was it could be that they're at the cemetery visiting a loved one and they see someone from your company in the company truck with a company shirt on. And that might be when their customer experience begins is, you know, what they saw, what they witnessed. So depending on some of those things, whether it be website, Google review, they had an experience with someone that works for you or observed what they were doing um, or word of mouth, um, either good or bad that may start their customer experience and this is where we are today versus where we used to be is that right there piece could change whether their customer experience moves forward with you and you may never even know it happened so um, just let's keep that in mind is that um, the customer experience i'm going to hit back on that one it's sort of one of those things that customer service is a part of the customer experience but customer experience is a much bigger, bigger conversation than just customer service. So I want y'all to remember that. The other thing is the customer experience begins long before you probably even knew it happened. So we're gonna talk about some things in a little bit. Um, and the good news is Paula and I are both gonna walk you through the steps of the process of customer experience. And we're not just going to hopefully educate you and motivate you and give you some new ways to think about things. We're also going to give you a way to put it all into play and make some good stuff happen. So just letting you know, we're going to walk through um, some stuff with you and we're going to give you some really great tools today. Right, Paula? Correct. That's our goal. So understanding the steps of the process. The initial engagement, driving by the location, Google search, online reviews, advertising, and referrals. Now, 
we gave this presentation a couple of months ago, but there's been quite a few things that have changed since then. And of course, this dreaded COVID-19. So now we need to kind of, as we say, reinvent ourselves and figure out how we can be relevant right now, what we can be doing to help those at their time of need. So when somebody's, they can still probably drive by your location. My question is, and I'll pose it, is there something you could be doing on the outside of your business that might help you serve those families? And when I say that, I'm maybe thinking a sign to promote virtual meetings with families so that they feel comfortable doing business with you and realize that they can get you on the phone and maybe set up a type of meeting. That's one way. Somebody else have any other idea? We're kind of quiet on that one. Ah, here we go. Perfecting your online presence. Absolutely. Oh, somebody's already sent out emails from virtual meetings. Excellent. Sending the right type of email. Oh man, I wish you could expound on that. Sending the right type of email. Bring that back. <laughs> Tell me so, more. So, uh, and, and I would say, let me, let me um, talk to that real quick, Paul. I think we had a conversation about this, you and I, um, is, in fact, I think we talked about this morning, now that I think about it, um, <laughs> sort of that now is not always the time to sell, right? That this is really, um, we want to drive sales forward and we want to be helping families and we want to do that in any and every way that we can. But at the same time, this is an opportunity to re-educate people about who you are, what you do, why you do it, um, to really be compelling. So I love the um, updating your web presence. Awesome. And I really love the sending right kind of emails because I think sometimes right now, and I will tell you as someone who's gotten a lot of emails from companies, you know, I want to know that um, you're a person. I want to know that you care. I want to know that you're asking how people are doing and how you can help and educating me on new ways that you're doing that. So I know that you're there for me. So that would be kind of one example. I've seen some good and bad versions of that. So keep that in mind. But did we get an answer on the expansion of the right kind of email? And someone just said that perfectly. Also virtual tour of their showroom. Ooh, Very nice. That's a great one. Love that. Okay. So I'm curious, is anybody using LinkedIn? or Instagram or those types of things to do anything live um, and doing a, a quick tour of their shops in those kind of places. Join me, okay. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Zoom is very easy. YouTube Live, awesome yeah. resources, guys. Absolutely. So if, if, if these aren't things that you're using, um, take notes, do your research, kind of dive into those and see what you need to do to make them work. I will tell you that Instagram, super easy on your phone, click a button, you can go live with the world, you go walk them around um, your showroom, super awesome. Um, but those are some great resources. So if you're not using them, write them down. Um, maybe, um, you know, you know someone that is, see if they can help you with that because let's face it, we are all in this together right now. If anyone tells you they know exactly how to do all this, they're crazy because we've never walked this road before, <laughs> right? So let's just make sure we, we're learning from each other. So thanks for those big shares. Absolutely. And so, uh, Paul, I think uh, you're on number two. So, you know, whoo, and initial interaction so calling in or stopping by your location definitely i think you're going to find more people are going to be calling you of course and so what's our best interaction that first thing that needs to come across over the phone and hana laura talks about it, you know don't have joe in the background yelling something um, hey larry where 
where did you put that? <laughs> yeah, don't let that happen. And we want to make sure. And and like myself today, it was like, oh my gosh, I took all my whiteboards off of the wall because I thought you don't need to see all that clutter behind me. So the it goes back to you know making sure your space looks neat and clean wherever you're gonna present yourself if you're doing these types of meetings, uh, so they can focus on what you you're saying and you can focus on them and not have distractions in the background for you. Very important. And so this is a big thing we talked about in Athens was um, when people do call your location, what do they hear? Uh, if you're not aware of that, um, I suggest you stop and listen to how other people are answering the phone. You may know how you um, answer the phone and how you'd like people to, but listen to the other people that work with you, work for you, and how are they answering the phone. And I did call a location not long ago, and um, the person was really busy, I could tell, and they picked up the phone, they go, yeah, what do you need? And it was a little, um, it kind of set me back a second, right? Um, because I was just calling in one, one to ask a question and to get, and I know we're stressed, um, I understand that, but the families that we're serving are more stressed than we are. And keeping that in mind and when we answer the phone, just make sure it's consistent that you know how people are answering your phone, that they're doing it in a way that you would appreciate and be happy with and that they are greeting your customers well and um, taking time having patience with them. All those things, right, Paula, that we know are important. Oh, and a beautiful reminder, let's see, Stephanie says, can the customer visualize your smile? I know one thing I used to do and I need to do it again is I used to put a mirror up in front of myself so that I could actually see my expression before I answered a phone. So absolutely. However, and now you... we have Zoom meeting for that. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> okay. Yep. So here's our next slide. The difference between good and excellent. So for those of you that have been to the MBNA, and if y'all caught our caught our our presentation, then I kind of shared with you a story about Hana Laura. Thanks, thanks asking Paula. me, what's that? I said thanks, Paula. Yeah, well, you know, throw you under the bus every now and then. Uh, I appreciate it. But um, so she convinced me to pick her up at the airport, which was out of the way, and then bring her to Athens, right? And uh -huh. that she would give me a steak dinner. Well, uh -huh. some of you may not know, and some of the rest of you. Yeah, I'm sorry you've heard part of the story before, but there is a second half to this. So <laughs> Hannah Laura said, I'll give you a steak dinner. I said, awesome. So we, on our way up to Athens, pull in to a drive-thru to grab us something to eat real quick. And we get a, I get a hey, hamburger. Hey, steak and shake. Steak and shake. Says it. Yes. So okay. that's, that was my st st steak. So the difference, I guess, between a good experience and an excellent experience is really important. You have to know that person's expectations. Now, I don't know about you, but my expectation was not a steak burger. It was more of a probably Ruth Chris type um, situation. So some people did give Hanalora a little grief about this when we were in Athens. <laughs> and on our way back now, we had a little time and we stopped at a little Mexican joint and I decided to have a steak fajita. And guess what? Hana Laura offered to pay because she figured that was, again, my steak dinner. <laughs> now, please help me with this. The girl does not know what a true steak dinner means. And she, I've said... She's not listening to what my expectations are. <laughs> so that really is the difference between good and excellent, right? Is that you got a free meal, like that was good. It did not meet your expectations, nor did you feel that it was excellent, right? Exactly. I'm still waiting. <laughs> and um, when Corona is over, that you I'm got with it. you all the way. So we might have um, to have a virtual steak before then. <laughs> that that'd be great. So here's the thing is that um, when we're talking about this, it really is that um, first impressions of your company, kind of those details. Um, 
And so, Paula, if you kind of take off with that there. Well, I'll kind of give you, um, I'll give you an example of what happened as far as the expectation of a family or a disappointing story. Um, once had a family who the, the family service counselor that was, that I had trained, uh, sat with the family and gave them a nice memorial. Nothing wrong with it, bronze on granite. And um, a few months later, the wife comes flying into my office, hysterically crying, grabs me by the arm, says something is tragically wrong, um, takes me out into the, to the cemetery and looks down and said, look, and I really had no clue. The memorial looked beautiful. Um, then she grabs me and takes me over to another site where there was a large memorial in a color, very, very different, very large and nice. And she said her words to me were, why didn't you let me know that I could do this? So um, I share that with you because I think sometimes we don't always share everything that we can offer families. And I think that's very important as especially as we're going to, and Hanalor is going to expound on this later, but I think the dynamics of the memorial, more people are going to be seeing a memorial in the future. So what, however you need to help that family think about the memorialization is going to be, it's probably even going to be a different conversation than you've had in the past with people. And, and really keep an eye on um, those guiding questions in the sales process. Um, Paula, I know that you and I are, are pretty big on these, the details of, you know, why is this important to them? Who are they doing this for, right? Um, ask about their, lo their loved one. Ask about, so where is this going? What cemetery is this going to be in? Because we need to know, of course, we all know this, but it's good to be reminded, you know, what, what are the restrictions in that cemetery? And what is the most important thing to celebrate about your loved one? right? And how can we personalize this and really look at the details of what's happening to make this as meaningful as possible, right? And, I, and I'll share this. I see Natalie wrote that that is so true. And sometimes the best showroom is the cemetery. So a good thing is to make sure that if a family talks to you, sometimes ask them if they've been looking at other things, what they've been looking at, so that you can make sure that they know you also offer that because you all certainly offer a lot of different variations of products to families. So don't let them assume that maybe because you haven't shown them something that you don't offer it. Absolutely. So I've uh, got a few interesting slides here for you that um, I personally, um, get really excited about here. So um, this one is 86% of buyers will pay more for a better customer experience. So let's think about that. 86% of the people that you sit in front of, that you hope to do business with, that you want to serve and take care of, 86%, so 86 out of every 100 people are willing to pay more for a better customer experience. So I think this is very important because it's not always about dollars. And I think that with what we're walking through now, for some people, the dollars will be important, but some people um, are really gonna go, I wanna have an experience. I want to make sure I'm doing the very best. And this memorial is gaining in importance. So when we look at this, we think about millennials. And I have a friend of mine who um, I would consider a millennial and she's, not quite 30, and I wanted to do something for her for Christmas. And I was talking to her and I said, what is it that you'd like? You know, what is it that you need? What can I help you with? And she said, don't buy me anything. And I said, okay, I really wanted to do something for you for Christmas. She says, like, don't buy me anything. I don't need more stuff. What I'd like is for you to plan something where we spend time together. Let's have an experience. So I live in Virginia and uh, so near Bush Gardens. And so I said, okay, so like a trip to Bush Gardens. She's like, yeah, that's what I want. Now, part of it is she kind of wanted to make fun of me because I'm a little older than her and me on a ride at this point, 
it's not good. But uh, I, I just wig out a little bit. But she didn't want me to buy her a gift. She didn't want me to wrap anything up. She wanted to know that I cared enough about her to go and spend time with her. She was after an experience over stuff or over dollars. So this is um, incredibly important. And I think that with COVID-19, we're all focusing on better experiencing experiences about how we can experience life, how um, we're valuing missing people because we're used to being around them. Um, and uh, we want to have those experiences and we want to engage and connect more. So this, this one is going to become more and more important in what we're doing in the coming weeks, um, guaranteed. But even before all of this, mind you, you don't have to be the cheapest person in town, right? Um, I have never apologized for pricing and no matter what I was doing, because I believe that um, you pay for what you get and you need to be worth it, right? And so this isn't about you being the cheapest person in town. This is about you being the best and you offering the best customer experience and having people that say, that's what I want to pay for. Okay. Um, so Hi, let's Laura. Yeah. Well, I've got you. One person wanted to know where that statistic came from. So can you share that? Um, I will be happy to provide that. I don't have it off the top of my head, but we did get Very all good. of these statistics. Um, we'll see if the MBNA will send that out, maybe um, a link to the statistics, um, and we'll make sure we share that with everybody. Is that okay? Good deal. Awesome. Awesome. Because all of these statistics came from the same place. We'll make sure you have it. 84% um, of companies that work to improve their customer experience report an increase in their revenue. So if you want to increase your revenue, you're in the right place. Because if you work on increasing your customer experience, right, 84% of you. So if we had 100 people on the call and 84 people um, kind of accept the call to action and take the tools we're going to give you and put them uh, in, into working for you, you're going to see an increase in your revenue. And I think that's exciting. I think we're all after that. I can't believe that anyone would have a problem with that statistic as far as just the sheer importance of it. So what you're doing is a great investment in your business today. 96% of customers say customer service is important in their choice of loyalty to a brand. So with that, let me say this. So when I go buy vehicles, um, I intentionally wear sweats, a ball cap, don't, don't look great, okay? Because this is why. When I walk in the door, and I have done this several months ago, I walked in the door, didn't look my best, no question. And I wanted to see how they would treat me. Because if you treat me when I look my best really well, how will you treat me kind of when I don't? Like, does that make a difference? Because if it does, I probably don't want to do business with you. So I walked into a place, they didn't treat me particularly well, they kind of discounted me. And so I, I said, I just, that's, I'm not gonna buy anything from these folks. I went to somebody else, same name brand, same vehicle, same everything, dressed the exact same way. It was the next stop. They treated me so well and were appreciative of me. And um, I just appreciated that they didn't care about how I looked. They wanted to connect with me and to do a really good job for me, right? And I spent a little more because I know the history of these two places. I probably spent a little bit more on my vehicle. And you know what? I feel really good about it. And here's why. Because people like to spend money with people they feel good about and that provided good customer service and connect with them on on how they feel about doing business so 96 percent of customers say customer service is important to their choice of loyalty to brands so if you want people coming back it's that customer service that brings them back to you um, time and time again so when they have a need in the future they're heading your way american consumers will pay 17 percent more to purchase from a company with a great reputation for great service so 17 percent more so you could be 17% higher than your closest competitor and still win their business because of the difference between your customer service compared to theirs. Good? Right. Okay. 
So how are we evolving with the times? Well, like I said, a few short months ago, we talked about a few ways that you might start implementing some things to change. However, right now, I think we're more into a forced mode of evolving when it comes to the way we interact with people. So love to hear a weigh in on a couple of things that you maybe experienced or are doing right now to evolve. Anybody use FaceTime? Ah, people texting. Absolutely, the Skype. Tinder. No, wait, that's a dating site. Never mind. <laughs> How did that come up? No. WhatsApp. Okay. Ten only. Yep, because of the ten only. So by using those resources, we also realize that families know that we care and also that it's a sign of sign of the way we need to do business for right now. So there's some things that we talk about implementing in our business to make things better or that we're evolving, but there in some cases we've definitely been challenged to, to make that choice much quicker than probably we ever wanted to before. And you got to understand how to share your screen with somebody. That's, that's a good thing because even as a conversation or a chat on the phone or an email or a text, as you can just see from the interaction with us, we could be on here talking to you and you're not seeing anything but the slides. But when you start and you see the person's face, then you get a much better feeling for who they are. You can see by the expression in their face, how they feel about what's going forward. Because obviously when a family's sitting in front of you and you start talking about certain things, they look at, you can tell by their body language, just how comfortable, or maybe they have a question that they haven't asked you yet. So with these types of technologies that are out there now, it makes it more important and it makes it for a better experience for them. So glad to see a lot of you guys are in embracing this at this point in time. Also, you know, doing things differently with this virus, you want to be ready to connect and share. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is that we find our, I was in a meeting yesterday where on the commercial side of our industry, someone shared that they actually didn't know of some things that we did. So I guess my takeaway from that meeting yesterday was be ready to reconnect and share all facets of your organization with someone. You may, there may be people that you serve that don't know that, for instance, you do, you know, community type memorialization that you're an artist and you do art pieces, uh, that you refurbish memorials and things of that nature. I think we all kind of take it for granted, some, for granted, not granted, sometimes what we do and what we can offer. So I think it's important to make sure that you don't, don't discount that and make sure that people know exactly what you do. And this is a great time to be able to share exactly what all you do. And I'm okay. reading here. Okay. Sure. It's I, personal I with the family. The chats, I can't, so. I'll tell you what I'm getting used to. Being able to read small print and. <laughs> so it's what kind of, good. what kind of comments are we getting? Uh, get personal with the family, a handshakes, hugs, a follow-up phone call, text. Virtual hugs are always good. Live chat on their website, all right, that's David. And online arranger, the entire process occurs without ever seeing an individual meet them where they are at. You know, this is the opportunity to, instead of having them get outside of their comfort zone and come into your office, 
they get to stay in their comfort zone of their home, right? And we get to go to them in, in uh, their comfort uh, zone and, and help them make arrangements, which is, um, you know, in some aspects, a really great change. Um, the other thing is that, um, let's keep this in mind with Zoom meeting. So if you've ever had that instance of, yep, I think this is great, and I think that I want to do this, and I think I like the design, but I'm going to have to talk to my kids about it, right? Um, keep in mind that you can do a Zoom meeting, and you can be with mom and dad as they're designing their memorial, and the kids, you know, one in Texas, you know, one in Michigan, can be a part of it. So you can actually one, how great is that, that you get to help mom and dad see their kids and their families face to face for a little bit, right? Be all in this together, shorten the selling cycle because you can get everyone's input and they can do it together as a family, even though they're far apart and they're so excited with you because you're the person that helped make that happen, right? I think that's an incredible service that we can provide during this time of bringing clo families closer together and helping them walk through these processes together. Any other comments there, Paula? We get anything? No, just one saying chat box is one thing they're using. Chat box is really good. So these are a couple of other steps, understanding your steps. So appointment and setting proper expectations. And of course your face-to-face -face meeting, which has changed a little bit. It's screen to screen now. You are the, you are the expert. And one of the things I've always lived by is that you know people don't really care how much you know until they know how much you care. And as I see the, the chat rolling, obviously, Everyone on here is letting everybody know that they, that's what, you know, if you care, that's the important thing. The, the, the money always comes around and taps you on the shoulder, but being able to show people how much you can care for them and adapt and be nimble in these times is important and gives them strength to be able to go through the grieving process without too much of a, a change. Also, let's see, I'm, I'm reading here. Uh, okay, so CJ said the study was based to establish value to over three years of estimated growth. So three years. Okay, thank you for that. Also, purchasing decision. So they've decided and they want to invest in your business and you believe they can meet your needs or you can meet their needs. Some of the things you want to do after you've met their needs, of course, is to make sure to not be afraid to ask them a couple of questions. You know, what did I do that you really liked? Is there anything I could have done differently? Anything you would have changed about the process? So that you're earning the right to serve them over and over. And don't be afraid to ask them to tell other people. And um, I can remember, I think it was Ian that had a really great suggestion a while back is when he sent out something, he sent pictures of a memorial to a family once it was set via text, and then also attached a Google link so that they could actually go straight on to whatever that was, Facebook or Google or Yelp to be able to give a critique on that business. So excellent suggestion there and I've shared that with, with a lot of people. So the first step in exceeding your customer's expectations is to know those expectations. So um, this really is uh, how the customer felt during the entire process. So we talked about expectations a little bit earlier. If you don't know what their expectations are, you can't possibly meet them or exceed them. So I think that all along the way during the customer experience, um, as we talked about talking about the details, knowing what it is they expect. So let's look at this. Let's say somebody comes in uh, to, your, to your place of business and they want to purchase a memorial or you do it through Zoom meeting, right? And um, so they've made the decision. They
they went through the first four steps, they've decided they want to um, purchase this memorial with you and they're real excited about it. And so you don't know that their expectation is that, well, it'll be here in two weeks, right? But you know, the reality of it is it's four to six weeks, let's just say, okay? Um, and so you feel good about the fact that you've done a great job, you took good care of them, you met, brought their family together in Zoom meeting, and um, it is going exceptionally well. But then two weeks from now, they're upset and they don't understand why the memorial isn't there yet, right? That would be one of those instances with not just understanding their expectations, but reframing their expectations to make sure they're accurate, right? They don't do this often. They maybe have never done it before, but you do it all the time. You're the expert, like we were talking about being the educator, being the expert, being the guide, is understanding, uncovering what their expectations are, and then finding out if you can meet them. And if not, how do you reframe them to reset their expectations so that they're correct and realistic, right? And then I'll tell you one thing that I like to do and that I have always practiced is um, if I get the opportunity to set an expectation, I'm going to do it, right? Um, and so I may talk to someone and say, hey, listen, you know, I'm going to work on this. I'm going to try to get this together for you. And would two o'clock this afternoon be acceptable if I have this in your inbox, right? And let's say it's 10 o'clock in the morning. And so they would say, yeah, two o'clock would be fine. So I'm working with the family. We're trying to get some things decided. Maybe I have some things I'm going to look up for them. By two o'clock today, I'm going to have that in your inbox. So take a look at that. Well, I know in my mind, my personal goal is to have it to them by noon, right? But I set an expectation of two o'clock today, ask them if that would be acceptable. They agreed. And then I'm going to work as hard as I can to get it there say at noon, and then their response is going to be, I can't believe I was completely expecting this at two o'clock today. How did you get it to me at noon, right? Is build in cushion, build in time, right? Or set an expectation that you know, even in worst case scenario, you can meet that expectation. Even if the day goes crazy, I can have this done by two o'clock today. And then make every effort to exceed that expectation, right? It's amazing how quick that will change their customer experience. And I also kind of want to talk a little bit about that what they're expecting right now is evolving, right? So let's talk about company A, company B. If company A is helping them connect through Zoom meetings or do things um, or making their um, arrangements and those types of things from a distance without having to leave their home and another one isn't, who do you think that they're going to be doing business with? That is not a customer expectation from a month ago or two months ago, right? At the beginning of this year, we would not have been talking about, well, the obvious expectation is that they're going to do business with people that can host a Zoom meeting and make all their arrangements via the internet. We would have said, that's crazy. No one would expect that. That's, you know, we, we're a personal business. We're an emotional business. We want to connect with people. But now that is a customer's expectation that is starting to happen. And we need to not pause our businesses, not put them on hold, but pivot what we're doing to meet our customers' expectations. Any feedback, Paula? Oh. Uh... I need glasses. It might be, it said it might be off topic now, but if you want to learn what best, what's best for your customers, use A, B testing and learn their behavior. And someone else, Tanner said, couldn't agree more with you, Hannah Laura. Oh, I like Tanner. <laughs> I like everybody, but I really like Tanner right now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Feeling the love. <laughs> okay. On to you, Paula. Well, it's kind of funny because I think I've already kind of touched on these points as I was talking earlier, you know, deliver the promise, making sure expectations are met or exceeded. And again, I think this all comes back to the, the caring part of this at this point in time. Also, and Hanalore is going to expound again on this, but we have to look, let's fast forward a little bit 
right now the entire dynamics of how we, how people are serving families has changed, especially when it comes to the funeral homes and the cemeteries. Um, I'm hearing across across the country there's either very small amounts of people that are able, of course, to come to a graveside service, or there are cemeteries that I've heard that are not allowing anyone into the cemetery. It's a direct burial. So with those dynamics in place, project into the future how this makes you different. There are, I think, some things that, because the grieving process now has changed, um, we're going to have, you're going to have a time to shine as far as helping that family realize there may be another time to come out and be at the site where there's going to be a lot of people at the location. And I don't want to still on a Laura's Thunder because that's going to be her next slide. But just think in terms of what the future is going to be like, because I think that's going to change, change the way you may help people look at memorialization. It's certainly going to change the, the nature of the grief for them. Um, also, following up, if anything, this will now probably give you a better way of following up with these families in the future. You may be able to be part of, oh, of the memorial service. Thank you, Terry. Um, so kind of some interesting and definitely heartfelt ways to keep engaged with those families far beyond just the the signing of the contract to purchase a memorial and and send them a text that it's out there not that those aren't all good things but it the dynamics have changed so Anna Laura take that back to you so you can expound on that absolutely thanks Paula so and before, wait, before you do, I'm sorry. So <laughs> it says they usually send email, send mail designs, prices. Thank you, Robert, for that. Offer webcam services to expand a direct burial into remote locations. That's great. Oh, that's idea. a good one. And I actually have heard of um, some cemeteries. Uh, I cover the Southeast. So in Alabama, I heard a few locations have been doing that. What about having a memorial service at the cemetery with the monument that tells the loved one's story? Okay, I think probably for cremation, that might be a great, great option as well. And Hanalore lost her slide. <laughs> I did, I did lose my slide. Give me just a second here, folks, and we'll That's be right, right back to it. I, I was actually um, busy trying to look up um, the statistics so that I can make sure that we shared that with everybody. Um, oh, we, we got that taken care of already. Yep. It actually I was, came from super office. Yep. And also some of the statistics came from uh, Forbes magazine and Forbes.com. So, uh, okay. So now yeah. we're back, but that's what I was, I was kind of um, fidgeting around to make sure I just want to make sure we got some of that information out there for everybody. So, um, all right, so uh, let's take a look at um, this on personalization meeting expectations. So one, when we think about how products change, right? This is a, this is a changing industry and, and we do like to come up with new stuff. So uh, one of my favorites um, on here, I'll just give you an example, is 20 years ago, we were not offering butterflies as memorialization to people, right? I think they're fantastic, I love them, but it's, it's a big change. We, we talk about um, cremation products and, you know, doing things with um, personal um, expressions and photos and uh, whatever brand it might be. There's so many folks that, that offer them, but um, making sure that we allow them to personalize in a way that is meaningful and appropriate and is really what they expect and hope for, right, is if you're not offering things that someone is offering down the street, they may go there because of that. Are you really offering all the things that um, that you can offer that you, that your families are interested in? So let's keep that in mind. But at the same time, when we're looking at these, um, Paula and I had a discussion about how this really, really reminded us that um, in light of everything that we're walking through today with COVID-19, and there are um, what currently more than 3,000 families grieving the loss of a loved one. 
um, because of COVID-19. So for 3,000 families currently, um, this whole process is really, really changing. We can talk about the, the changes in our business. We can talk about um, changes in our approaches and in us getting outside of our comfort zones and changing the way um, that we relate to our customers. But we have families that are changing the way they grieve um, and the way that they're facing this grieving process. So if you would kind of imagine that we are all very used to um, that when we say goodbye, it is either maybe in a hospital room, maybe with um, our loved one, or maybe it is in a funeral home at a casket. And we're joining with our loved ones and we're, we're, we're telling um, our loved one that's passed goodbye, right? Well, no longer are those things happening in hospitals. People are passing alone, right? And their families aren't there with them. And we're not having funeral services. We're delaying those or just choosing not to have them at all. Families aren't getting to have the same grieving process that they're used to. And so we have agreed, Paul and I, in our experiences and, and what we're kind of walking through and what we've talked to people about is that grieving process is going to change and the memorialization is going to become even more important than ever. We think that you're going to see an increased priority on memorialization and personalization um, and making it meaningful. So there's a few things that are um, understanding cremation options because more people are choosing cremation. Do you have options? Do you have a way to help them memorialize? You know, when we did this a couple of months ago, we talked about the cremation rates and how that's changing and that leaving grandma on, on the mantle isn't a final resting place. But let's go beyond that. And let's talk about the fact that these families are not going to have memorial service or family gatherings to walk through this process together. They, those cremation families may very much so be more interested than ever in permanent memorialization because that may be that their grieving process and their family gathering takes place at a grave, um, someplace similar, um, and with their family together looking at the memorial. That may become for a little while the new memorial service. So we have a couple of opportunities, one of them being um, that if we're serving families in a timely fashion and doing it in all of the new ways that we know how and we're embracing all of that, um, you know, we can, we can possibly get these, if they're gonna push out their services months down the road, you should be able to have um, these memorials in place for the day of the service when their family gathers and they're able to look at this. But um, we definitely think that um, it's gonna change. We think there's gonna be more importance on memorialization, which makes everything that all of us collectively do for families more important. So here's the big takeaway, memorialization, is going to become more important. It's going to be uh, more at the focal point in the grieving and healing process. Standing at the memorial may be the first time they get the opportunity to say goodbye. And I think we really, really need to keep that in mind as we're serving families through these really difficult times. You have anything? I just, I just want to piggyback on that because, kind of like you said, the tradition has been either, and I'll just go with what families have considered in the past, I hate using traditional burial, but where, they're, where the family member ha is in a casket and the family has the ability to say goodbye, the, the family's focus was on the casket. Um, I don't think that focus is necessarily going to be there now because they are not having a lot of time to be able to congregate and be together. So what's going to, I mean, what I project is that families are going to make giant celebrations of life at a later date, and that memorial is going to be the major focus. They're going to be able to go out to that cemetery. They're going to be able to go out and make a celebration, and that will be the way they'll be able to connect, go through that grieving process, and, um, have something that they're very proud to show the rest of the family. So Absolutely. So we've got um, about four more minutes um, before we've reached the hour. We want to be really respectful for time. So we have one last slide. So this slide is focused on one step at a time. 
if any of you think that this seems a little overwhelming, there's too many steps to this process, I get it. Okay, so what we've done is we've kind of um, put in here, and you'll be getting, um, MBNA has agreed to send out a, um, a sheet that we passed out in Athens that has this information on here. So those are the six um, that we talked about. I'm gonna wrap up number seven. So that is referrals and reviews. When you, once you have a happy customer, leverage that for more happy customers. Sorry about that typo, guys, I'll get it fixed. Enlist them for online reviews and referrals, bringing you back to step one. So number seven is how you close the loop and build your business, build your pipeline, right? So that is, you have done a great job, you've, you've done everything you should have done, exceeded expectations, you weren't afraid to ask, what did we do well and what can we do better? you have pivoted, you didn't pause, um, you have a happy customer, and now it really is doing those things like Paula had talked about. How do you get those referrals? Um, how do you improve your business with their input and feedback and feel like your partners and all of this together? Um, using online tools, right? of making sure that it's Google or Yelp or however else um, that you're doing that or submitting something to you so you can put it on your website uh, as a testimonial. All super great ideas. But this is what we wanna leave you with because we promised you a really, really good um, action plan for you. And we don't want this to be overwhelming because we're all feeling a little overwhelmed, right? So this is, if you take a look at this and you were to say, listen, if we at my business just focused on one of these, right? If we just focused on delivering the promise, right? And we made sure that we had good product delivery and we communicated it and we follow through on what we promised really well, we think we could see a lift in our business. Then focus on that one. If your thinking is that during either the initial interaction or the appointments, um, if it is, I'm really gonna learn today how to do Zoom meeting. <laughs> right? And I'm going to do this and I'm going to meet families right where they are. And if we focus on that, then it's going to give us some lift. Or maybe it is, we're just all going to sit down this afternoon and practice how we answer the phone and make sure it's consistent. If you'll just take one, not seven, take one item off of this list, focus on it for the next week. Once you get that down, move on to another one, right? but focus on one thing you can do better to increase your business and make an incredible difference um, for you, for the people that work with you and work for you and the families that you serve. And before we end, there's a couple of more comments here I just wanna read. Um, Robert, oh, somebody had said they put a GPS uh, coordinates, I guess, for a memorial and Robert White wants to know how to do that, so. If somebody can share that with the MBNA and can send that out to the group, I think that would be awesome. Also, I loved um, <laughs> Matt. Like, I hope you're right, Paula. <laughs> right about what? No. <laughs> uh, let's see. I also loved, uh, oh, where was that comment? Said that we have, I think Alan said that they have met with the families and found, ah, my, see, technology for me. I'm trying to scroll up and down and I keep going too fast. It was a great point. Said, I've always found that if your customer can share their personal emotion with you, that tells me I'm doing something right. We are sharing the grief with the family. Absolutely, Alan. Agree with you wholeheartedly. So those are the comments. Awesome. Any questions from anyone? In trying times, people always think about, um, I know just from my past experience, you know, we've been through 9-11. I know that from that experience, when I was working at a cemetery funeral home, it was, I hate, it was a banner, banner couple of months for us because people actually thought about the what ifs. Oh my gosh, I need to take care of myself. I need to take care of my family. I don't want to leave any burden on anyone. So I think it does, it, it puts it puts our mortality in the forefront of our mind and it makes us realize that these are definitely loving things that we need to do to help help ourselves and help our families so we did Thank have someone all. ask if if cold spring is going to have um uh, some web training some technical stuff uh yeah paula we're we're <laughs> 
Paula, today we were the emotional crew, right? Uh, <laughs> Not the technical yeah. crew. <laughs> but um, yeah, we, we do have, if you're connected with Cold Spring, then keep your um, eyes out because we, we do have some more trainings that we're doing. So, um, and not that this was all about um, Cold Spring, this is all about who we are as an industry together and that we really are in all of this together. Um, it just be, it happens to be who we work for, so we have information on. Thank so. you, everyone. Love your positive feedback. Thank you. Let us know if there's anything we can do differently or better. We're open to that, absolutely. Yeah, thank you, everyone. We are going to share the recorded webinar. Um, after um, today's session. So you should be seeing that in your inbox by tomorrow morning. And we will include the materials that Paula and Ana Laura referenced as well as their contact information if you have any more questions. Um, so thank you all for your time today. Um, feel free to stay on for a couple more minutes if you have any additional feedback, we'd love to hear it um, in the chat there. Um, but wishing you all a safe and great day. Thank you all.